Good evening. Well, uh, what I've got going on today is uh, I've I've been getting questions about uh, my my little tools and fixtures, shop made tools and fixtures video that I did. Uh, people saw my 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 miter sled, and I've been asking questions about it. And uh, some people have asked for plans for it, and well, I really don't have any plans. Uh, I could hand draw one out, and I've actually thought about doing that. I'm not any good with Google SketchUp, so uh, I just I don't I don't know that stuff. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show my sled, how I built it. Uh, a lot of these ideas came from Brian Higgins. He's a he's another Georgia boy. Uh, you may look at his uh, YouTube channel. He actually shows how he built it and everything else, uh, you know, uh, probably in a little more depth than I'm going to be. I'm going to show you how I did this and uh, how it's used and things like that. And I'm going to show you my shop made uh, drum sander for, for uh, flattening out your segmented pieces. So, anyway, uh, without any further ado, I will get started and uh, show you this sled first. Okay, well, this is my miter sled. And uh, just like any other miter sled, this thing starts out, <coughs> uh, I used, uh, it's not MDF, but it's, uh, it's another particle board type product. But it's very dimensionally stable, and that's very important for any miter sled that you're planning on continuously using over and over. But uh, I've got, on the bottom here, I've got hardwood uh, slats here that I cut on my table saw. And I made them out of hardwood. Uh, uh, yeah, it's the hardwood. It's like a uh, cabinet backing and uh, bookshelf backing, stuff like that. <clears throat> But it's very, it's very uh, dimensionally stable. Is another reason I use that. I, I made this sled about two years ago, and there still is no slot, and it still moves very freely in in the slots. But I, I use those, and uh, I basically squared up the bed, uh, squared up my my sled here with the front edge of my saw, and I screwed those down. <clears throat> Now, you're like, well, how do you know that it's square? Well, I'm not worried about it being square because my my fence here is adjustable. So uh, once I once I find 90 degrees, I can lock that in, and I just drew a line. And I did that for several uh, for several uh, different angles up through here. Now, for some of the uh, angles that I've that I use frequently, like say this right here, the way I did this, if you can see it, uh, this is 16, okay? And this is 12, and this is 10, this is 8, and I've also got the angles written down. But if I want to make like a 12 inch piece, I mean a 12 piece segmented ring, I'll bring this up to 12, and I can feel my little brass pin here. It's a 3 16 pin. I drilled a 3 16 hole so it's really tight. Now once I get it, once I once I find this angle, and I've run test pieces through, and it ends up as close to perfect as I can possibly get, I will I will drive that in, and there, it doesn't move at all. It does not move at all. So <clears throat> the next pieces that I run through here will all be 15 degrees. And it'll be a 12-piece segmented ring. So that's how I do that. But with it being so tight, I have to use pliers or something like that to get it loose. So I'm going to grab my pliers. And, and now, now I'm free to move to another angle if I would like. If I need a six-piece segmented ring, I'll go right here. And I don't have a stop for it because I've never made a six-piece ring before. So I'll use my little stop block. I have a stop block made here. I'll just tighten this down. 
and when I bring this down that should be very very close to a perfect 30 degrees but if it's not I'll make several test cuts and once I get it perfect if I need to come up or down a little bit I'll move my stop block until I until I make perfect 30 degree cuts then uh, I'll drill another hole up there for that so the next time I go to do a six piece uh, ring I can come here and I can drive that in the same way it goes all the way back down to 90 degrees if I just want to make a square cut that's why I didn't worry about the sled being perfectly square because once I put the rails on this doesn't matter all that matters is this is all that matters is the bar and once I get get this set back down to 90 degrees to the stop bar I pull this down and I'll run through and I'll make a 90 degree cut make a 90 degree cut and I, I can do all these different angles here <coughs> Okay, what this piece does here, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so you can see for a 12 piece, for a 12 piece, okay, all right, now I'm, I'm good and ready to go. Now the way, the way this is going to work is if I've got a piece here that I need to cut, I'll raise my blade okay I'll make sure my blade doesn't okay now looks like saw up that quick and I'll make a couple of these cuts and I'll show you basically how this thing works all right All right, I've got my first angle. I'm on a 12-piece segment, which is 15 degrees. And I'm just going to whack, whack this corner off right here. Go through. Now. What I do next is I'll measure this out to whatever length I need the outside diameter and I will mark it and I'm gonna say that whatever this mark is here that's that that mark right there is what I need so I'm gonna push this up toward my blade and get this very as close as I possibly can and then I'll move this up and lock it down this is the stop block for my segments. Okay, so I made this one too that will come down and lock that segment in place. So when my blade goes through it, it doesn't it doesn't hit the blade and go flying through the air or hit hit you in the face or something. But once you get it set up. Uh, this concept came from uh, Brian Higgins he's uh, he's another Georgia boy but he built a sled similar to this I've got a couple little differences but uh, you know the idea for this sled came from from his YouTube channel uh, but this this piece here is a stop for your segments this piece right here holds it down and it's adjustable I had to put another threaded rod in here uh, because it didn't really reach far enough but it's adjustable out now I have another hole here that this stop if I if I've got long segments really long segments I can move this bolt back here into this hole so it can come back even further 
and if I've got very thick segments I can actually move this this bolt back to that hole and get it back there so uh, but anyway basically that's that's my sled in a nutshell uh, it's it's very accurate and it's been accurate ever since I built it uh, but make sure you make plenty of test cuts before you put your pin in uh, once you get it as close to perfect as you can possibly get it then put your pinhole because with a 3 16 brass rod and a 3 16 hole you have no slop it will not move all my pivot point here is a uh, it's a quarter 20 bolt and whatever it's it's a really tight fit down in there there's no slop in the holes or anything whatsoever so anyway uh, that's my that's my miter sled uh, maybe uh, maybe you can build you one I made it uh, to where my blade doesn't go all the way back there or here I keep my hands on this side of the blade you know mainly for safety but this piece here in the front it reinforces that MDF stuff right there but it also gives you a place where you can push and pull this back here is just reinforcement uh, it's just a piece of hard wood that I that I uh, glued on and I put uh, hot glue in there to hold it while it uh, while the glue dry but that's that uh, now uh, I'll move on to my my uh, my drum sander that I built for flattening out my my segmented rings and I will uh, I'll get back on that here in just a second okay well this is my <laughs> this is my homemade drum sander okay uh, basically it's two parts you got a mandrel with your sandpaper and you've got an adjustable height table uh, I'm sure you've uh, probably seen these before on YouTube or or whatever but your pieces will come through the top here and come out the bottom sanded okay the way I did this <clears throat> I'll start with the mandrel first is uh, I took a, a baluster post a uh, you know uh, just a uh, I think it was a 3 by 3 post and I trued it up and I, I, I trued it up with a, a block of sandpaper uh, so I got it perfectly straight and parallel and, and it is <clears throat> and then you know I wrap sandpaper around it the sandpaper came from uh, actually the original piece of sandpaper that I used came off of my old uh, belt sander it's a 4 by 36 piece of sandpaper that you can buy at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever but I believe I can get about 15 inches between these two uh, points here which is very good and right here it's, it's kinda open but uh, the sandpaper turns this direction so I don't have to worry about it trying to tear out with me uh, I'll, I'll, I'll fire it up here in just a, a few minutes and show you how that works but uh, and then there's another part the table and and I will take it off of the lathe and I will show you how I, uh, how I built it so I'll be right back in just a minute to show you how I did that alright Basically, what I've got here is my table is uh, in two parts. I've got the base section that sits on the lathe, and it's uh, I've cut a piece of uh, this is oak. I milled it down and, and got it uh, got it cut. It's an inch and a half wide, which sits perfectly between my bedways on my lathe. These are my clamps to hold it in place. As I when I put it on there, I'll turn the clamps and I'll tighten the nuts that are on the bottom side here and that'll tighten it down on the lathe this little hole here that you see holds this bolt and this is my height adjustment got uh, an oversized hole for this half inch bolt so it can move kind of freely around and then I cut a Forstner mortise here of uh, I believe it's three quarter inch 
and uh, that way I can adjust it up and down right here. Now, <clears throat> the way this works is this head comes in here into this pocket that I made. That I, I just built a pocket right there for the head of my carriage bolt to sit on. And with the weight being pushed down on it, this thing holds perfectly, perfectly steady. Okay. Now, I put this in just for reinforcement. This is just for reinforcement. Okay. Now, the table itself that, that the wood's going to slide on is uh, two pieces of a three-quarter inch plywood glued and screwed together nice and flat okay and like I said it is it's adjustable it comes up and down just like this on your lathe so you can get closer to the sanding drum or further away and uh, I'm going to go ahead and mount this back up and I'll show you how I use it well I, I put hinges here on the front edge okay all right, I'll be right back. Let me set this up. Okay. Well, I've got it clamped down. My clamp's under here. i got my bolts tight. This is good and, good and steady, ready to go. Now all I have to do is mount my mandrel. And what I did when I made the mandrel, I cut a tenon on one end. Now the center point on the other end. So I'll, I'll just mount this in. Pull up my tail stock and get it centered. And tighten down onto my tenon. Okay. Alright. Good and tight. Tail stock. Good, good tail stock pressure. Okay. Now. I generally run this uh, 8 900 RPMs. Maybe up to 1,000. It runs pretty good. Runs, runs nice and true. Okay. So now all I have to do is is put in my height uh, adjustment. It goes right in that hole and into the pocket. All right. Let me move you right around here so I can access that myself fairly easily. get you in there a little bit closer okay now pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I do this and uh, it's simple but I need to uh, find my pencil okay what I do is I'll just take make pencil marks all the way around this thing. And this is just a segmented rain that I had here in the shop that I haven't flattened yet. But uh, all I'm trying to do is just get, get these pencil marks all around here. And once I cut all the tent, uh, pencil marks off, I know I'm done. Or I know that it's flat. Okay. Now, Okay, I'm a little loose, so I'm going to tighten this up some. I just grab it and give it give it a few turns. Let's see, I'm too tight now. So I'm going to right there. Now I only go about maybe an eighth of a turn at a time. Okay, so it's just barely touching. So what I'm going to do, and this thing generates a lot of dust, so you need to have your dust collection set up over here. Uh, that, that's what I have this right here for. But uh, the, for this demonstration, I'm not going to use it. Basically, this is what you do. Now, you don't, when you feed this through, all you're doing is keep it flat on the table and let it, just let it ride through. If it, if it comes out, it goes backwards. It's not coming towards you. Okay? Now I'll raise it up about an eighth of a turn. Again. A lot of my pencil marks are, are getting gone. And another thing, you can't get your finger up under there to get pulled in. 
You don't want your hands getting in on this side, but this side here, it'll just throw it out. Even if you make contact with the drum, it'll throw your hand out. Okay? Tighten it up a little bit more. And go again. I believe I've got all my pencil marks out now. Once you get close, you can pull it through from this side. Okay. Okay. All my pencil marks are gone, so that's flat. Now what I do is I'll just take and I'll mark this side the same way. All the way around. Now, I'll give it another another turn. Fire it back up. I can feel these wall, some of these walnut pieces are protruding a little bit. But this will get both faces parallel to each other. So what we got? Okay. No pencil marks. That's smooth as glass. Good tight, <coughs> good tight uh, joints. I did I did these joints with my miter sled, and uh, they all came out good and tight. All right. Well, that's how my sander works. Uh, it's a little crude, but it works. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, People had been asking, so uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, I I love doing segmented stuff. It's uh, it's a lot of fun, but without very very precise tools, it's it's hard to do that stuff. Uh, but uh, you can build a sled that is just almost hyper accurate, and you can build a drum sander if you've got a lathe then you've got a drum sander. All you have to do is just, you know, build a way to a, for to adjust the table up closer to your mandrel, uh, you know, so it can adjust up and down, and build a mandrel. The hardest part about the whole build is getting the mandrel trued up. Uh, if you saw how I did the, uh, the roller pin, I did my mandrel on here the exact same way. I took measurements with my calipers, all the way down and then I roughed it out almost down to the lines or almost down to the final dimension and I put some heavy sandpaper on a block of wood and went back and forth across that thing until all my marks were gone and uh, that's about as true as you can get that. Uh, I'm eventually, I've actually acquired a motor now so I'm going to actually try to build me uh, a sure enough real drum sander for uh, for flattening these pieces and things like that but this one's worked good for me for a couple years now and uh, I really haven't had any problems with it but uh, I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed the video oh yeah and the bolts on the uh, miter sled the quarter 20 bolts that hold everything in place they're held in place by T nuts that, that were put on the bottom countersunk with a uh, three-quarter inch portion of it so, uh, 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative.